So now as we transition away from the, the building of the tabernacle and back maybe to more focus on the building of the people, mm -hmm. um, because you don't work on people with saws and with needles and with thread, you work on them with, with commandments and with uh, ordinances. This chapter ends with, with shifting that focus now to people. Yeah, so you've gotten all these instructions beginning back in Exodus 19 of all these covenantal instructions, and then what happens? Verse 18, he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. Several important things going on here. When you write something in stone, it's very permanent versus, say, papyrus, which could easily burn. So God is trying to indicate the perpetual nature of this con well, it's a conditional covenant he's made with the people. If they do these things, here's what will happen. And later we'll see that Moses actually smashes the tablets when he sees that the people have actually already broken their commitments to God. Smashing the tablets is a sign that the covenant's been broken. And we'll see later in chapters 33 and 34, God has to reinitiate the covenant with them. Okay, So God's super merciful. There's times he shows his anger. But they're called tables of testimony. What's a testimony? It's a witness of something that we know to be true. So God is actually sending his testimony out of, here is how I know that you can be happy, that you can be happy if you do these things. I also find it significant, this little phrase, written with the finger of God. Now, we find the phrase finger of God in the story of God uh, punishing the Egyptians and the plagues that come upon them. And the ancient Egyptians, for them, the finger of God, their gods, were seen as signs and powers of being able to get stuff done. So you talk about the finger of God, it's his ability to enact his power. And it turns out the Egyptians eventually see that God in heaven, he's got the most powerful finger. What's also interesting here, we'll put a little image up. This is called the Law Code of Hammurabi. It comes from ancient Mesopotamia. There's a king who was trying to create some order in his empire and trying to bring together the laws so that people could understand how to live harmoniously. Now, if you look carefully at this image, it actually has been carved out of a black piece of stone, and it looks like a finger. And up there, you have King Hammurabi interacting with his god, who he believed was a real god, who he believed was giving these laws as written on stone. So this idea is actually quite ancient that God himself will deliver laws and put them on stone that cannot be broken unless the people themselves break the commandments, God will have to reissue written tablets. But ultimately what happens? We get from Jeremiah saying, have it written on your heart. Great, maybe you put the 10 commandments on a wall somewhere. I don't mean to be offensive to anybody. What good are the written commandments if people don't live them? God wants them in our heart doing them, and that's why Moses and God get kind of upset at the people in the next chapter. It's like, what's going on here? I have just saved you out of Egypt. I've shown my power. There's this burning fire on the mountain. I've given all these instructions, and you guys lose your minds.